Hey there, toys and collectible fans. This is Flygo for TechSushi.com. Look, this isn't a toy review. This is a bit of a movie review. Uh, I'm not long back from seeing Prometheus, uh, the movie in cinemas. And I thought I'd give you a bit of a review if you've yet to see it or you want to know more about it because this is one movie that really uh, raises a lot more questions than it answers. Great movie and really enjoyable. Uh, if you want to know more, listen in here and I'll give you a bit of a... a uh, back story to the film and some bits and pieces that you might not have noticed or have thought about. Uh, look, anyway, Prometheus, brand new movie, just out uh, pretty much uh, in Australia here. I think it was June the 7th it came out here, June the 6th. Same for the UK, I think they got it on June the 2nd. June the 8th is the go live date in the US and, uh, and uh, really uh, across the rest of the globe. It's a Ridley Scott movie. Uh, it has a connection to Aliens, the movie, or Alien is, is his initial film, but this is a bit of a reboot. It's quite a different film. Stick with it. I'll, I won't do any spoilers until later on here, so if you want to turn off, uh, you can turn off later on and I'll, I'll spoil some bits and give you some secrets away. But the cast is really quite stellar. Uh, Numi Rapace from uh, The Girl with the Dragon Tattoo. Fantastic actress, really good in this part, absolutely uh, stunning in one part particularly. Uh, Michael Fassbender, who uh, is in X-Men Origins and was also in Inglorious Bastards, I believe, uh, if I recall right, uh, is just stunning as David, uh, David 8, I believe, version 8 of an Android robot. Uh, you've also got Charlie's Theron and a barely recognisable, um, uh, what's his name, Guy Pearce, I've got some notes here, remember. Um, who plays actually Mr. Wayland as of the Wayland Utani Corporation, which we've seen and uh, kind of known to loathe and love in Aliens and uh, Alien 3. So, the, uh, this group, this small group of people, are basically heading off to a planet. And this is an important point to note the planet is called LV223. And they head off to this planet because they believe this is the origin of all human life that they've found the clues for. They land there. They find, well, origins of something, and things start to go a little bit wrong, as you'd probably imagine. Um, now, look, there's going to be spoilers here, so if you don't want to know more and you've not seen it, switch off. But if you want to know more and you've seen the movie and you maybe want to discuss or think about this a little more, here's some thoughts. When I mentioned the planet LV-223, a lot of people assume when they see the film that it's the planet that they find the crash ship in Aliens. It's not so. That was LV426, a completely different planet. So a lot of people have already seen the movie and they said, well, the space jockey, the guy who appears in the big chair at the end with the elephant-like face, huge gun that we see in Alien, is in fact the uh, planet uh, where uh, basically all the eggs are that we see in Aliens, where the queen is and so forth. Not so. Completely different planet. Pretty much all of this is to do with, I think, uh, one of the chief writers in the project is Damon, L Damon Lindelof, the guy who you probably know from Lost, and if you sat through all of the Lost episodes like I did, <laughs> Mrs. Fly Guy and I did, we sat through all of them all seasons to get to that ending where we were like, what? They're dead? So uh, there's another spoiler for you in Lost if you've never seen all of Lost, but um, stunning show all the way through, and the, the story really kept going through Lost in twists and turns and very weird things. So if you think about that premise put on top of Prometheus, this is why we have this almost completely reboot or different universe of different storytelling from Alien and Aliens that we know. So related franchise, but not a follow-up and not a sequel or a prequel. If you think about it, uh, if you were going to see Prometheus and you went in knowing that the final scene would be the jockey, the space jockey with the, the huge gun and uh, an alien that they, they began to see, then that would be it. That's the end of it, really, because we know all the other movies, right? Well, they completely rebooted this, so it is definitely something different. A couple of other things that really stuck out to me was, it is mentioned at one point that Charlize Theron may be a robot. I'm absolutely convinced she is. I believe she's the kind of Adam and Eve process that, that Mr. Wayland has set up, David being one of them, and the Eve obviously being the, the character she plays in the movie, the captain. So uh, we don't get to see that, but I've got a funny feeling we're going to get to see some extended cuts from Ridley on Blu-rays or special editions of marketing people love to give us in years to come. And I guarantee it, I really do think she's some kind of replicant android robot. And that would really tie in a little bit more to Lindelof's story and add a bit of a twist to, to stuff that's going on. Uh, other bits and pieces just to kind of uh, uh, note that I did quickly put down there. That space jockey at the end... Um, Again, not related, but everything looks exactly the same. These weird jars of um, what some people call online weapons of mass destruction that 
We believe these aliens in the beginning of Prometheus have made uh, is basically there to be the genesis of life, but this weapon of mass destruction has gone wrong. Because in one scene in Prometheus, we see all these aliens again with these trunk-like breathing masks running away, and it seems like this uh, weapon that they've got has uh, basically got out of control. What is it? What's the giant head for? What's that representing, and what are these containers for? Uh, behind that massive container we get to see one sequence where there's a green crystal embedded and we don't know quite what it does and also on the wall for a very brief sequence is definitely what looks like a huge alien queen with the, the head shape and yet there is no aliens in the movie it's very confusing um, and this is what I'm saying, I think this raises more questions than answers and there's loads of forums and websites where people are just discussing this thing to death a couple of other things was um, uh, the two planets we definitely mentioned uh, in the reboot. Why do the engineers, the basically the aliens that are, are, are on this uh, kind of planet or in the ship, the space jockeys, why when they first of all see human beings do they want to kill them? What have we done? One theory has been that I've managed to read online is uh, when human beings, they created the genesis of human beings as we see at the beginning of the movie, but uh, as soon as human beings begin to spread out to the galaxy and come into contact with them, we're classified then as a bit of a virus herself. Some people have mentioned these uh, uh, engineers are the people who keep the balance across all the planets. And this is why we get some sacrifice at the beginning of planet Earth for this guy to basically start a new species. So it's all very weird and confusing. And you'll know if you've been to see the movie, but uh, there's a lot going on in this movie. And a lot, it's a lot smarter than I think people are giving it credit for. And a lot of people are kind of dismissing it as rubbish and huge plot holes and... Well, there are and there aren't, but again, it's a completely different movie. Really, it's the same as the Aliens franchise, but seen as a splinter from uh, how things have gone. Whatever has happened, it caused me to come back and spend the best part of two hours frantically going through forums, reading up all the kind of websites and all the news I could get on it, and it's definitely an interesting movie. And without a doubt, the 3D in the IMAX, uh, which we saw, was breathtaking. Absolutely stunning. Ridley Scott has filmed the majority of this film, or huge chunks of it, I should say, in IMAX. It looks amazing. Really well worth seeing. And the 3D is pretty immersive. Uh, he's really spent some time shooting it in 3D, uh, which just shows it really does this. Some, again, it's not that kind of reach out and touch in your face, but it just adds depth. And it's a really nice feature. So, look, that's my thoughts on it anyway. You may hear it and you love it. I've maybe spoiled some for you if you've not paid attention to the spoiler alert. Let us know what you think. Uh, comments below or join us on facebook.com slash techsushi. And uh, tell us what you think. Prometheus, Pile of Poo or awesome movie that's going to spawn more sequels? Love to hear your thoughts. Let us know and we'll see for more figure reviews and maybe some more movie reviews. Tell us what you want to see. Cheers.